Wonderful. Hello, Finimizers, and welcome to another Finimize Live. I'm Michelle, and I'm the Global Community Lead here at Finimize. Today's session is all about building wealthy women. So let's kick this off. Uh, our event partner today is CFA Institute, a global association of investment professionals known for setting standards of professional excellence. They advocate for ethical behavior in financial markets and provide valuable knowledge to the global financial community. With over 190,000 CFA charter holders across 160 markets, their mission is to prioritize investor interests, optimize market function, and stimulate economic growth. Please check out their certificates and courses on their website or follow them on LinkedIn and Twitter at CFA Institute. And today we're very excited to have Khalud Aldekail, a CEO of Atika Financial Company with over 25 years of experience in financial advisory and investment banking. She is a seasoned professional. She's also a founding partner at Rating, the first independent local rating agency in the kingdom. Kalud's expertise spans uh, business formations, debt advisory, risk management, and investment banking activities, including IPOs and M&A. Ex uh, excitingly, uh, she's actually the first Saudi female to be awarded the CFA in 2003, which is exciting. Uh, Kalud, great to have you here. How are you today? Excellent. Thank you, Michelle, for this wonderful introduction. I feel great and uh, very happy and honored to be on this platform, uh, which definitely prioritized something extremely important in spreading uh, knowledge and education aligned with the CFA. Thank you so much for having me. Wonderful. It's great to have you here today. Um, okay, let's dive in. Um, a 20, uh, 2021 study at uh, Fidelity found that 67% of women are now investing outside of their retirement accounts compared to 44% um, in 2018. And today that female investor number is growing rapidly. So for those who aren't already investing, what are some practical steps people can take to start investing today? Thank you, Michelle. Excellent question. I'm very, very happy to hear that uh, women uh, we have we're increased. We're having more and more women uh, uh, interested in actually investing, and this is one of our objectives. Uh, still, we have a long way to go. Um, and I'll share with you a couple of practical experiences because this is maybe the the, the most uh, ex uh, question that I'm asked from all ages. Uh, students in universities, doctors or people who are, who are um, away from the financial sector, they're always like, how can we start? Uh, those of us who were fortunate to get a business class or a financial class where they learned that uh, investing starts with saving. So I like to go back to foundations and, and remind those that who didn't have the opportunity to hear this is, you know, you need to go back to basics, is that uh, you need to find ways to start uh, uh, saving because without saving, you won't have any foundation to make decisions of investment. So uh, obviously, uh, early on, once you start your career and start generating income, uh, one must uh, think about their spending behaviors and uh you know, the concept of saving also arises. So the some of the practical, I would say, tricks in order to uh, assist us in our typical spending behavior, which each one uh, typically does, especially the younger you are, when you have a, a less uh, obligations and family, et cetera. And this is when you really need to start these practical techniques in order to uh, uh, set yourself up for better investment uh, uh, skills is to start saving and things such as, first of all, understand how much your income is and really know, believe it or not, a lot of people are not aware of how much they, they are able to generate or they're generating. This is one. The second thing is 
try to uh, establish an independent bank account. This is something that I did for many years is to have a separate bank account. So the minute you get your income, uh, you uh, that you're aware of how much I'm going to get exactly and when is you say, OK, I'm going to remove some 10 percent, uh, 30, 40, 50. Top. And people say, what percent? I say, depending on how much you need to live and whether you have an obligation. Uh, and I, I don't say that, you know, save from the beginning. I remember my first three salaries I completely uh, spent it but it was on my mom to get a gift so definitely uh, 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 the typical number is 30 percent people would tell you but I say if you if you have no obligations and there are and you are able to save as much as 70 percent so as 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 long as you can say I I would go for the six months upcoming six months that I don't have summer or I don't have things that I need to expense why don't I maximize my deduction to save and it and the way I do it is you remove this money to another bank account, to another account, and preferably in another bank. So the first practical step is open an account in another bank where you have some automatic deduction that goes there with the highest percentage that you can afford. This is one. The second thing is uh, be flexible. I mean, um, sometimes uh, you can't... Um, you can't save 70%. Okay, I'll save this time 30%. Next month, I won't. So I think if you create a structure that's flexible, it will be more sustainable for you. The second thing is uh, similar to when you're doing a diet and you don't want to put a cake in the fridge in front of you. It's basically have this bank account without a card without a debit card. It could even be a savings account where you're not allowed with restrictions to withdraw from it. The second thing is, is automatically put a step up. Okay, so you saved, you're you saving money, cash, but then what do you do with this cash? Automatically, uh, every three months, if you save a certain amount, then move it to so the stock market or move it to the next asset class that you have, you know, you have to, uh, you know, uh, decide in the beginning. And this is another practical thing is each one should start at least at a minimum, some sort of a portfolio account to buy in stocks. And that's what I always say is the, the, the first step of investing. So this is some of the uh, practical uh, uh, examples for uh, uh, women, obviously men and women, to start saving. It's uh, things to, I don't want to say trick, but to develop mm -hmm. your behavior in order to save the money, to make it uh, uh, not so accessible, and then comes the next step of really investing it. I just want to throw a statistics. Even in Saudi Arabia, we have around 6 million local portfolios in the stock exchange. And I always say stock exchange, and maybe we'll come to this later, is the first step to investing. So we have around 6 million portfolios, of which only 26% around 1.5 million that are for women. So still, women have less portfolios, and I think that uh, is in line with women being more risk averse or, you know, less understanding of, uh, you know, investing in the stock market. Yeah, that's a really big um, statistic, and I'm I'm definitely, I'm not exactly sure of the statistic in the UK, but I think the that's probably on par with what we have and the I think the the method of making sure that it's difficult for you to get to that money because you never know what tempting thing is around the corner next weekend um yeah. just having a few days to kind of try and access that money makes you stop and think doesn't it absolutely yeah absolutely and also I would also add uh I mean uh although you know, investment starts with uh, a discipline of some sort, uh, you know, such as the one I just mentioned in terms of putting a bank account and deciding of an automatic transfer, etc. You also need to ask yourselves, what are your investment goals? And usually the investment goals must should be aligned with what are your objectives in life or obligations? I mean, if I have to pay rent or if I have to feed the kids or if I don't have any of that and I want just to save up for the summer. So uh, looking at your lifestyle and thinking about your goals and objectives is kind of the underlying for kind of all your lifestyle rather, you know, which which is eventually is actually fueled by your financials and specifically by your savings. Mm, exactly. Yeah. And it's going to change from when you're 20 to 30 to absolutely. 40. So... Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Now, so moving on to um, diversification, which is always a hot topic when it comes to investment strategies, um, could you maybe provide some practical tips on how people can diversify their investment portfolio? 
Absolutely. Diversification is the foundation of uh, finance, basically, or investment uh, investment management. Mm -hmm. And although a lot of people uh, are usually scared from financial concepts or terminologies, uh, I always say that uh, everything has to go back to logic and make sense. And if it doesn't, then there's a problem either with whoever is explaining it. The concept of diversification is based on risk mitigation. Because even if I know nothing about finance, uh, I would understand the concept of not putting all my eggs in one basket. And because things happen in life. And so the concept of diversification is something that is aligned with prudence, aligned with risk diversification, aligned with the fact that I don't want to uh, be in a situation where uh, if I don't diversify, this means all my attention has to be to one area or one asset class, which in itself logically uh, you know anyone would say that that's not very comfortable so the concept of diversification now uh, in finance well uh, you know so the end goal is to have obviously a well diversified portfolio because this is what kind of uh, means sustainability and what i just described uh, described as you know risk mitigation uh, because of not putting all your eggs in one basket like how do i reach this how do i reach the diversification obviously in theory, they tell you, and it's kind of close to reality, it depends on the size of, of, of funds you have. If I want to start my portfolio or my investment, say with $5 million or even $5 million or even a $1 million, and that's a sizable amount for me to be able to divide it in various asset classes uh, and diversify. Now, diversification, I take it on three layer, layers. First, the geographic location. Well, let me start the other way. First, the type of asset class. Is it uh, shares? Is it uh, fixed income? Is it units? Is it real estate? So first is the asset class. Uh, number two, it's the um, economic sector. And the third, uh, is it education? Is it telecommunication? Uh, is it real estate? Uh, the third one is geographic diversification. Now, uh, logically, uh, so the largest, uh, if you have a larger amount, it is easier for you to uh, divide it in various uh, uh, asset classes, uh, location-wise and, and uh, sector-wise. Uh, most of investors don't have a big amount to start with. So what do you do? Which is what I did when I started 20, 30 years ago is... First of all, you design the bigger picture. You say, okay, eventually I want to have them. And they teach us in school that it's a 60-40 between equity and bonds as just a standard of, you know, uh, uh, let's say an average diversification in securities. But I say, if you don't have a big amount to start in a well-diversified uh, portfolio, somewhat diversified portfolio, because you don't have that much and most of the people don't, then start with one asset. First of all, design the bigger picture that you say, eventually I want to have uh, shares, uh, bonds, real estate, uh, gradually, and start with one asset class. Obviously, even within your uh, uh, investment strategy, uh, I'll tell you what I usually do, and it's typical, is first you need to build, I say, your solid investment strategy, which is a strategy that is long-term, that invests in blue chip and good companies without any gambling or trading, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody needs to have the foundation. And there are always outliers. I mean, if I have millions and millions and, and I can afford to, to gamble and that's different. I'm talking about the typical uh, uh, person such as myself a few years ago, hopefully, uh, as, as I passed through that when I was a younger age, younger age, living off of my income. And uh, I had the same questions. How do I diversify when I know I need a lot of money and I don't? So I said first, so you say I'm going to start building the first step towards a, a solid uh, the, the solid investment strategy with almost very limited risk. And I can only, st I'm going to start with shares. So I start with blue chip shares and then I build, I build, I build on the same share and then I move to the next company, third company, fourth company, all blue chip. Then I go to fixed income and then I go to another asset class units, et cetera, et cetera. Reads. So I am building towards something that I know the end will be a diversified. The other type is no. If my dad comes and gives me $5 million, which he never did, then I would say, okay, I could even hire an investment uh, bank to diversify for me my portfolio. But then I would say, yeah, I have enough money to say 20% here, 20% there. So 
in the end of the day, I say this is like designing a diet. You know that to lose weight, health uh, to 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 lose weight, you need to have a healthy diet and exercise. But there are so many designs of this diet, what to eat. It's the same thing. So the concept of diversification is, as I said, to differentiate in the asset class, geographic, but how you reach it, whether one time or gradual, which is typical, uh, uh, is uh, is what I just uh, hopefully explained. No, that's very detailed. So thank you. And I guess there's a lot of platforms out there that have tried to, you know, act as a simplifier for diversification, haven't they? With, you know, what's your take on robo advisors or platforms that have kind of... Yeah, yeah. see, it's... Been you know, I love what technology is doing. Uh, it's trying to, well, it's at very various levels before technology and before robot advice. Um, um, the underlying thing is to for us to educate ourselves on what is investment, what is finance, and what does finance mean, which is you know obviously managing your money, but as an individual, uh, as an individual level, and what does finance, what does sorry investment mean, and what what's an investment policy statement, what's what's investment criteria. I mean, this has become a common uh, literature, which I think, especially I focus on women, I tell them you need to go and educate yourself. I mean, especially I have a lot of doctors and engineers and. People people who are really advanced in their fields and say, oh, we don't know anything about money. I say, similar to me going out now and reading about healthy life and environment and et cetera, we need to elevate this level of knowledge. So it's, and I say education, knowledge, awareness. So I could be a PhD holder, but I don't really have the knowledge. And even if I have the knowledge, I don't have the awareness to change my behavior that I go and save and this and that. Mm -hmm. As simple as understanding what my spending is, what my obligations are, bringing paper pen and planning what I need in a few months. This, when you when you break this down, this behavior, it doesn't have to be really sophisticated planning. This is something that our grandmothers would have done if they had the limited income and they had certain obligations. So um, I think that technology, uh, like uh, robo advice, is taking uh, advantage of missing gaps in the market to serve, uh, you know, needs. And the most critical need is these kind of questions: How do we invest? How do we diversify? I say first, before jumping on these platforms, which I definitely advise to try things, mm -hmm. is number one: invest in yourself. How educate yourself on what does it mean? What do I need to invest? What are the tools that will allow me and what is investment and how do people make decisions and how do I pick a stock and what are asset classes what do they mean by asset classes so and the literature is overwhelming I like I like you know that you know I do agree that we live in over information which which overwhelms us so now the challenge is too much information so how do I uh, yeah, and he's, uh, uh look through this information Anna I say uh, uh seek knowledge to understand if you don't understand then you're not you didn't get the right knowledge and mm -hmm. i think the message i want to get out there is investing is much more simpler first of all it's uh, uh, aligned with uh, human logic and basic behavior of prudency in terms of using money and spending money is completely logical but you need to seek information uh, as our childhood book was look listen and learn mm -hmm. so um i, I definitely would uh, advice uh, trying anything uh, 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 new uh, fintech products platforms but do not try anything without uh, trying to understand every step of the way what you are invited to use mm. and this is you know financial regulations at least i i would say in saudi and i'm sure elsewhere highly regulated all the uh, fintech products and services with so many disclosures the the final thing i would say is read the fine print if you don't understand it do not put a one dollar there yeah, good point. Um, okay, well, talking about technology, um, so AI has become a really big investment theme over the years. I'd love to hear how, you know, what you what you would suggest to help others stay informed about market trends like AI. Are there any kind of news sources or platforms out there that you would suggest um, people to, you know, dive into yeah. to understand what's going on? Absolutely. Uh, I think that uh, professionals and people who, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm 
even myself, I'm in corporate finance and IPOs, et cetera. I'm very uh, familiar with asset management, et cetera, although I don't personally do asset management. I'm sorry, I'm a customer. But so if I start with asset managers and people who actually, uh, these are people that live on Bloomberg and Reuters and et cetera terminals. So they go all the way, technical stuff. Uh, follow the news, follow the Fed, follow the announcements. All these announcements have all these schedules and have meetings around them, daily market meetings. So that's that's that that's that's the first kind of audience, and this is sources of information. This is where it's coming from. Then you have the other people who are in the financial sector, such as myself. I'm close to it, but I'm more of an investor for myself rather than I invest people's money. And for me, still, the new the, uh, it, uh, you have to go through the news channels, no matter. No matter how much I know that a lot of this stuff is not <laughs> really real, you need to see the outlook on the economy. You need to see, uh, uh, you need to follow major news. Uh, and now with, the, uh, you know, online, uh, you can customize uh, where you get your information from. And I personally, I go to all even governmental announcements, etc. So you have to customize your own syllabus and sources of information that you want. But again, this is not going to be in line with what money you have actually and you invest. It's just going to give you a general outlook. Now, the third level of information and the most important, which is for the masses, including us, is to actually go to the service providers themselves, the banks, the robo-advisors, the people that are actually on the ground promoting the service itself because, you know, they're at the level of deploying the product and the service. So you go to your local banks, your investment banks, and they are these entities and these areas are in the business of actually marketing roadshows, uh, information on their product. So it is very difficult not to uh, uh, see this. But of course, there is the social media, which is extremely important, but in the same time, careful because, you know, with all what's happening in terms of cybersecurity and what have you, people are taking advantage. So we're operating in a different world in terms of level of information, but the basics are the same. You are you are trying to find various asset classes and uh, asset classes to park your money, and uh, there. So Anna, so you need to cover the basics, which is each one must have a, lo a local portfolio, assuming you are in a developed or developing economy. And you must have a regional or international portfolio. Obviously, uh, access to these portfolios, such as being able to open an account here or there, and you have access to it, you meet the local requirement, taxes, etc. That's also a, a thing uh, that needs to be considered. Uh, it doesn't make sense to open an account in Paris if I ha have no access because it requires residency, for example. So all of this in consideration. Uh, so educating yourself on the basic securities and basic venues and uh, to in order to access which is which is brokerage accounts then those companies or banks or brokers that have these brokerage accounts that are legitimate and you've already done your due diligence and you meet their uh, you know uh, uh, KYC AML etc then um, you uh, they will be the main source of information so the first source of information for the normal person is to go to your local investment bank and sit and ask, read their websites, get, yeah. So this is where you, after you educate yourself, then you vet new information about new asset classes, new ideas. Uh, and I personally, I'm trying cryptocurrency. I'm trying things online that I, I don't know where they are, but uh, I'm doing NFTs. I'm just, just dabbling, but this is not my core investment, but this is me trying new asset classes, new venues. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. I think also, um, just as a news source, obviously, Finimize is really good at curating um, hey. information and and making it very simplified, so you can learn there about. There you go. Things. Okay, uh, that's going to be number one now. Yeah, for me. And uh, and CFA, I think their courses. Um, they've just released something on on crypto that was last year and ESG. I think they've updated a few courses recently, which are yes. great for understanding. Um, so yeah, definitely check out CFA. Um, and then moving on to a bit more of a personal question, uh, I, I really wanted to ask in the past, have you made any mistakes as an investor and what would you tell your younger self, uh, to avoid or do in the future? 
Sure. Excellent. I love that. Um, you know, everybody's greedy. Everybody says, oh, I wish I did this. Oh, I wish I wish I didn't leave that job because I was about to accomplish 10 years. I was so Anna personally, uh, my life, uh, let me say my um, if I wanted to describe my character and relationship to money, uh, Alhamdulillah, I was fortunate to to live uh, to uh, be brought up by, you know, Alhamdulillah, taking care of and never had anything uh, really need. Uh, and financially, we were well off, Alhamdulillah. Uh, so I didn't have I didn't have the right relationship with money because when I grew up because I never considered money because I wasn't responsible honestly until I became much older and had children and had to support myself and my children then I realized the importance of money uh, because then you know money is limited of course so then you had to plan and you had bigger obligations etc so one mistake, I, I don't like to say it's a mistake. It's difficult for me to say it's a mistake because I've enjoyed my life. But okay, for the sake of the question, I'll say, what would I have done differently? 100% I would have uh, uh, not spent as much as I spent. See, I'm not saying I would have saved more because I know I would have spent it. But I would, because my whole social setting did not uh, consider, uh, you know, prudent spending. Honestly, my dad would just spend everything on us. So I would have been, and I would have not known. I, you know, I needed to get children and become more responsible for me to realize that, no, you need to be, uh, you know, uh, you need to control your money. You need to save for the future. Uh, money is depleting, et cetera. So I wish I had educated myself more on spending and saving when I was younger. This is one. The other thing is, uh, I, I'm already working the line of finance. I, I wish I had taken more risks from the beginning. I actually was complete risk uh, averse, uh, only investing in blue chip companies and very little and very, I, I didn't think, but back in the days, we didn't have the sort of asset classes or access to information. So I was completely prudent, uh, but that was fine because Alhamdulillah, I made up for it in my career and my job. But had I not been in the financial sector myself in investment banking and was just relying on my prudent investment, no, I wouldn't have uh, uh, you know, uh, accumulated what I'm trying to accumulate now because uh, my strategy was completely risk averse. I would have taken more risks. That's number mm -hmm. two. And that's it. I love that. And I, I really empathize with the, um, the starting younger um, point because... Uh, I started a our women's investing uh, club here at Finamai six years ago. And when we started six years ago, there was a lot of, you know, women in their 30s and we were all meeting up. And now, you know, we're getting people that are coming that are 20 years old. And some of them are saying, am I still, am I too late to, to start? And I'm like, no, this is great. Please. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's I think it's so it's so important to start. I mean, we go around with for with children and uh, tell them to open. You know, of course, parents they open for them accounts. And even for my daughters, I've opened accounts and I tell them because I want them to understand. I I told my younger daughter to research for me stocks just for her to understand how to research what's a stock. Mm -hmm. So the whole financial literacy uh, is so critical, and I think we're doing a great job today. You know, not only the media, but there are so many initiatives like Feminizers. I think has an amazing and noble objective is to educate uh, you know people about this and all it takes is just uh, you know you're educated we all know what it is but knowledge and awareness awareness it kicks in your behavior because you know you see what the impact is on your life personally um, and for women specifically uh, we're seeking financial we're seeking uh, independence you know mm -hmm. you know the whole thing about women independence completely linked with financial uh, literacy really and uh, savings yeah, it's a very good, important tool. Um, I think we've got time for one last question. So I'll pick uh, this last question that I really want to ask you and maybe it can kind of set the scene for, for everyone else listening. Um, in term, terms of your own investing strategy, are there any things you're doing this year to set yourself up for success? Yes, absolutely. Maybe I'll touch upon a little bit. Uh, uh, of course, Okay, so Anna, I believe uh, I would say that I'm in the you know more than halfway through my investment uh, plan. 
I believe that you can only start investing after meeting your uh, personal objectives, obligations for your family, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, so you are, you have investments to cover your basic needs. I wouldn't even call them investments because you're parking your liquidity temporary to pay the bill or this or that. And then uh, and then uh, you build your uh, foundation investment, which is everybody has to have a well-diversified portfolio starting with the closest to the, to the farthest, closest being uh, my local market, my local portfolio, and then regional, then international, and then various asset classes, depending where you're operating and what's more lucrative. But, but uh, you know, eventually uh, reach a well diversified picture of all uh, and, and doesn't have to be all but minimum i would say minimum is you must be in equities and you must be in fixed income this is minimum but in the end of the day whatever security you have in terms of intangible securities not real not real assets such as land and gold etc but if i'm talking about intangible assets and securities in the end of the day everything breaks down to either debt or equity no matter whatever it is even if it is a derivative or if it is a, a fund in the end if you drill down it is driven by either debt or equity so uh, covering basics uh, from debt and equity and building all these securities so personally what i did long time ago is i started building after covering my personal needs for my kids and myself and etc and I expanded actually the list of what I believe my personal needs are. I said my personal needs will require two summers, will also require my car and and. So I even took that out of my investment. And I said, this is part of the man you build. You save and save and save and invest to meet that particular objective. So defining your objectives in a way that is and, and, div and dividing your objective in buckets and then you put an investment strategy for each bucket. So mm -hmm. the bucket of my personal life where I expanded to include my uh, summer, my personal car, etc., had its own investment savings, which is will be more of liquid kind of liquid stuff. Then I go to my foundation uh, uh, investments, which hopefully would be the insurance for my family for the future. So the in, the investment foundation is, okay, uh, this is where I can have a long term or a real estate or uh, shares that I will never sell, but only accumulate hopefully for dividends in the future. And I'm still in the middle of my plan, by the way. But so that's my foundation. Then comes the luxury sl slash impactful, which is not yet there, uh, not, in, not yet in a big way, which is, you know, uh, you reach a level where you can do philanthropy or you reach a level where you can actually invest to support people that's the third kind of investment so uh the middle the middle one which is the foundation investment which is your insurance scheme this needs to be really big enough for you to jump to the next level mm. so i'm in the middle now building my foundation well yeah i i definitely resonate with that i'm like <laughs> I definitely want to end at that last space, maybe one day, you know. Yeah, got, you can. You it's, don't it's, plan. It, yeah, and it's it's not um, uh, exclusive. It's not one or the other. You can actually, I do a lot of philanthropy. I support a lot of people, uh, not necessarily with giving money, but I give my time and I do invest with others. So uh, you can still, uh, you know, spend your money now even. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. Um, so thank you, Khalid. And thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and joining thank us. You, Michelle. And uh, uh, thank you. yeah, I hope everyone found this informative and yeah, feel free to. I hope so. I hope so. And thank you so much. I'm, uh, I think this is an excellent, uh, you know, opportunity, uh, also part of our message is to uh, support women for intentional investments and to become investors. I want women to not only build their financial uh, uh, independence and their ability to understand and make proper investment decisions to grow and overspill for impactful investment, but also to create women investors and women investment um, investors who will be the women club also. And um, then automatically by default will have a, an impact in their own economies and uh, their own uh, any countries. So thank you so much for the opportunity, Michelle. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Khalid. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Thank Bye. You. Bye.